When the court was arguably stolen in 2016 because President Obama had an open vacancy to fill and the Senate would not let him fill that vacancy, which had never happened in American history. So I was shocked that uh, former President Obama left so many vacancies and didn't try to fill those positions. I'll Senator, tell you why. I'll tell you why. I was in charge of what we did the last two years of the Obama administration. I give, I, and I will <laughs> give you full credit for that. There was also a confluence of things coming together for the first time in American history history that amplified my small f fear into kind of capital P panic. So it was one, the, the sense that the court had been taken and would not become a liberal court possibly for a generation just based on the demographics of the, of the judges, the justices. The second thing is that the scope of planetary emergencies we face, I would argue, has never been larger because there's effectively no time left on the climate change clock. And the data show that even before the court was arguably stolen, the court has been behaving in very partisan ways. It's an extremely conservative court going back 25 years. Just Roberts himself at his confirmation hearing, he was asked, is Roe v. Wade settled law? In other words, is the law protecting the right to abortion settled? And you know, are you gonna, do, are you gonna try to uns unsettle it? And he said, no, 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 that's settled law. But when you look at his record, once he became Chief Justice, in all six cases he's heard dealing with abortion, he's voted against women's rights six times, 100% of the times. If the court is frankly a shill for GOP donors, what that means is that the court is not going to allow the next Congress and President to solve climate change because no matter what kind of bill comes out of Congress, the court's gonna strike it down the court is not gonna allow the next president in Congress to solve gun violence, because no matter what kind of bill comes out of Congress, the court's gonna strike it down. The same goes for immigration, the same goes for economic inequality, for hyper-incarceration. This is a very conservative court that votes in the direction favored by Republican donors. So, so you have all of a sudden a confluence of a stolen court, and then you have a confluence of a, of a partisan court that will not let Congress solve planetary emergencies, um, and then the third piece of this is that the court itself has been implicated in the uh, compromising of democracy. The court has arguably allowed the Republican Party to consolidate minority rule by, for example, allowing unlimited dark money to flood our politics and Citizens United destroying campaign finance, the uh, decisions that go back a generation, by dismantling the Voting Rights Act. So we had an act that was supported by almost every single member of Congress, Democratic and Republican, that disallowed voter suppression and the Supreme Court got rid of it. And now millions of black and brown votes are suppressed um, every electoral cycle by putting its stamp of approval on hyperpartisan gerrymandering. So the court itself is implicated in the erosion of democracy. They need to get rid of the filibuster in the Senate and other Senate rules that prevent majority rule because if they don't get rid of the filibuster, they'll never be able to pass any laws, including a court expansion bill. Then they need to expand the court and then they need to pass a very aggressive version of a bill called H.R. 1, which is a bill that bans vote, uh, voter suppression and gerrymandering and dark money but an aggressive version of that, offering statehood to D.C. and Puerto Rico, allowing immediate citizenship for law-abiding immigrants, providing automatic right to vote. The Brennan Center says that if you do that, you add 40 million voters to the rolls. The problem is that if you do any two of those steps, everything will fall apart. If you just get rid of the filibuster and unrig the system with an aggressive H.R. 1, banning voter suppression, gerrymandering, and dark money, what's gonna happen? the court's gonna strike down H.R. 1. The court's are, the conservative majority has already proven that it's hostile to democratic revitalization. So the point of, 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 of judicial reform and expanding the courts is not just the courts, but the point is that the system has been, I mean, no, no, no democracy should tolerate voter suppression it's, and, and untraceable dark money, it's ridiculous. So if you wanna unrig the system, um, you have to expand the courts.
at the state level, which is often the laboratory for them, they've already stolen two courts through court packing in Georgia um, and Arizona. Um, in fact, the idea of court expansion was the head of the Federalist Society, the Republican Judicial Reform Organization, who wrote a paper urging court expansion a couple of years ago when they thought they would need to expand the courts in order to uh, preserve their control over it. They want to pack the court. You know what that means? They want to put on a lot of justices. These are things that are just horrible. I guess we could do that too, right? We could do that too. Demographically, it's just going to get harder and harder for the Democrats to take the majority control of the Senate um, unless the system is unrigged and those 40 million voters are added to the rolls and statehood is granted to D.C. and Puerto Rico. Um, because just the way the, the Senate math works, um, uh, a tiny slice of the population living um, in a large number of states is able to consolidate majority control of the Senate, which is what is happening now. Demographers are predicting that it's going to be less and less and less and less likely for Democrats to get majority control of the Senate moving forward. I don't think there's a bipartisan solution to any of this because, I mean, my analysis, which you know you could absolutely disagree with, but my analysis is that what we're seeing across the range of policy issues, you know, the, the gaslighting, the lying, the extreme policy positions, uh, you know, the allowing Russia to influence our election, you know, all of it. It, it is a function of a ruthless partisan power grab of a party that knows that it is slipping into the minority because it is catering mostly to white people um, and that can't win unless it cheats. Um, and so um, there is zero incentive um, for the Republicans to uh, de-radicalize or to compromise on any of this. I mean, they have consolidated control over the levers of power. We think that we can solve our problems at the ballot box and we think the key to solving our problems is getting Trump out of office. So of course getting Trump out of office is important because he's reactive and his reactive personality is dangerous. And but, even if he is thrown out of office by impeachment and or at the ballot box, that doesn't mean that the Democrats are going to be allowed to govern. And when one party is not allowed to govern, even when it wins elections, that's not democracy. I mean, that's single party rule. <laughs>